Robert Plank Show Episode 88. Create more free time, become super productive, and enjoy the money-making process again. Welcome back to the Robert Plank Show. John C. Maxwell says, be big enough to admit your mistakes, smart enough to profit from them, and strong enough to correct them. We're going to talk today and we're going to, I think, get you past some of the usual hang-ups you might come across where, or I you know, it's not that you might come across them, you do come across them. You come across them on a daily basis and it's really easy to think that I just need to figure, I just need to get the answer. I just need to get the one little sentence, the one little trick or technique that will get me instantly productive anytime I want to. Now, anytime that I'm feeling down or stressed out or overwhelmed, I can just use whatever, whatever tapping technique, listen to whatever hypnosis and I'll be back on track every single time and those kinds of things work some of the time but they don't work all of the time and what makes more sense to me is to figure out the deeper meaning and to figure and just kind of discuss uh, these the, the real reason why you can't get everything done that you need to get done we all have the same 24 hours in a day as Bill Gates and Warren Buffett but it seems like there are some days when there's just it, there just isn't even enough time to put in a couple of minutes on the computer, or even worse, when we it feels like we spent all day at the computer doing whatever office tasks or uh, whatever business building activities, and then we say, I know I sat at the computer all day today, but I, I sure as heck don't know what I did. So we don't want that for you. And you know maybe you're uh, making a web page, or you're making an app, or you're finishing a book, and you fall into all these traps of being a perfectionist and self-doubt and maybe you think you have high confidence but you're self-defeating so you actually take actions to work actively against yourself or you're waiting around for the stars to align you know i i uh i ordered this new fountain pen and and uh, a notebook and a keyboard and i, I got to wait the 7 days for those to arrive before starting on my brand new book or i need to force myself to get motivated well yeah, right. A lot of that's crap. Most of that is crap. Uh, and what you have need to have to do, and we're going to talk, we're going to discuss ten actual techniques today. We're going to discuss ten techniques today that will get you deciding that you want to do these things. So in, the, in this, in every episode of this podcast, we talk about building your own online business from home, and the way to do that is to create what we call an income machine, which means that you uh, find a niche and a marketplace need. So you go and find people who are, uh, who have the need to lose weight, who have the need to trade stocks on the stock market, who have the need to create a membership site, who have the need to secure their WordPress blogs, who have the need to make money selling voiceovers on voiceover sites. Uh, so you figure out the niche, figure out the need, get a website, .com domain name, an opt-in page to collect leads, an autoresponder sequence to follow up with those leads over email, a sales letter to sell an information product, a download page to deliver that, a blog to have some free content for traffic, and then the, the more active ways of getting traffic from places like Facebook and, uh, and from Bing. So that's what you need to set up. And you can still be creative and you can still be unique but there are there, there are just certain things about making money online that it would be a really good idea for you to to have and you to do and it would be a really good idea for you to look at what people have been doing online the past 10 20 years and instead of you having to reinvent the wheel from scratch you just model what works in your own way and so whatever it is that you're you're building towards i, I don't know what your exact situation is but if you find yourself always always starting new things but not finishing getting 95 percent of the way to the finish line or just in general just unmotivated unhappy and not really able to get into that creative flow state where you knock it out then today's program is for you and the usual usual advice i'll skip over uh i, I give this advice almost every time is this Four daily tasks. You can join us at fourdailytasks.com slash group. And what we do is just post the four business related activities that we're going to complete today, right? And so this the most important word in that was the word complete. We don't start stuff, we don't uh, read ten percent of a book, we say I'm going to write 
th chapter three of my book. That is an actual step, an actual milestone that will be completed. And these tasks that we complete every day, every weekday, are three tasks that take about 45 minutes and one task that takes about 15 minutes. And I'm going to go to uh, our group right now. It's a Facebook group. And I'm going to post my four things. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, number one, VO. You don't have to know what VO means. Number two, Robert Plank Show. That's what we're recording right now. Number three is going to be publish uh, and email. And then number four is going to be FBL. You also don't need to know what FBL stands for. So those are th four tasks and one of those tasks in there uh, and that was the, the VO one that is a 15 minute task in my business the other three including this one uh, is record, uh, this one of recording the podcast that is a 45 minute task so that's my usual advice there is that I've tried to do lists and to do lists don't work to do lists gives you give you lots of easy unimportant things and it just grows and grows and you end up being more frustrated and more overwhelmed by the system than having no system so every day just <clears throat> excuse me complete four things that are going to move your business forward and move you into making money I would also highly recommend that you buy a screen capture program I use Camtasia uh, Camtasia studio I think you can get that at techsmith.com so this is a program where you can record your screen and record your voice and that is what uh, we're talking the program I'm using right now to record this podcast but I also have a very specific use for that which is kinda weird but stick with me I record my screen as I'm doing the things that are important, the things that need to be done. So that means that if, if you're cranking out that chapter of the book, record a video of you doing it. Now, why is that? Well, because you record a video at the beginning, you say, and this is important, say out loud, I'm, I'm uh, finishing chapter three of my book. Say it out loud. That way it's very like very clear to you what it is you're doing. And literally record this video of you typing out the book. Now this will kind of put you into a little bit of like a, a rush and hurry up kind of kind of feeling, rush and hurry up state. And it'll also train you to not have a bunch of different things open, to not have a bunch of windows open. Now on top of that, if you want to get even crazier with this, tell somebody else what of what you're doing tell somebody else that you have these four things to do today and that and you know call them in the morning knock out the four things with and record them on video and then in the afternoon or whenever you're finished call them up and just honestly list the four things again and tell them number one I did it cool and now now they'll be proud of you number two I did it now they'll be proud of you number three I did it now they'll be proud of you number four I didn't do it because I ran out of time so don't list like a bunch of don't get into excuse mode but you're gonna feel kinda bad that you know that that you didn't budget your time properly or that you chose too big of a task to complete uh, before you had to you know take off out of the office away from the computer and speaking of that treat your computer like a hot seat so don't don't browse around on Facebook on your computer don't watch TV sitting at the computer your computer chair and desk is for sitting down and cranking out churning out those money-making activities if you're sitting at the computer and the tasks you're doing aren't making you money or if you're just kinda at the computer and it's hard to really get anywhere then get up and get away from the computer not forever but for a couple of hours until you're reset to sitting at the computer equals making money all right and then to get and then th what's helped me to, is to get over that perfectionist mindset and to get to one take content most of what I create is one take content the podcast I'm recording for you right now I mean I coughed a couple minutes ago I'm leaving it in why because starting the podcast over or editing out me coughing isn't going to equal any more money for me and likewise if you're writing a book the first draft will probably be okay It'll, or at least will be okay to publish on Amazon now and if you want to go and get a professional editor to go back and do it or if you want to go back and clean it up yourself that's fine but get as close to one take content as you can if you have someone on for an interview I mean let's say that you interview someone for your own podcast and you can figure out that system at podcastcrusher.com well are you gonna 
have someone on for an interview and talk to them for 20, 30 minutes, and then 30 minutes in say, oh, you know, I said, um, one time, can we start the interview over? Well, no. If you've ever been on a live webinar, a program for that is webinarcrusher.com, live webinar where you can have hundreds of people view your screen live and they can hear your, your voice live as well. Now, it, are you going to get 30 minutes into that and say, oh, well, you know, we have 300 people on right now, but can you guys just kind of leave and come back and I'm going to start over? Well, no. So life never works that way, right? You never get enough phone call with someone and say, can we start this phone call over? So one, take content. So anyway, I know we unpacked a little bit there, but I'm going to skip over that advice. Four daily tasks, Camtasia babysitter, accountability partner, computer hot seat, one take content. The point of all that is that if your problem is you don't have enough time or not, not enough free time or maybe not enough time to build your business or you building your business took over too much of your life, usually the thing that's important can be done in five minutes or in an hour. And so that might mean that you know, you know, one thing I see a lot of successful internet marketers do and then really mess up is they will build a huge following. They will build a huge list. They'll have a bunch of successful affiliate product launches. I'll see if they have a blog. They get lots of comments. They show all these numbers of sales, all this money, and then they leave for six months. And that's totally, first of all, it's okay to take a vacation, right? It's okay if you make a bunch of money, have a big success. It's okay to go, go to the beach for a while. But when you do, can you set your business on autopilot can you really schedule in some emails or if you have if you've just made all that money can you have someone else run the business as do you have a virtual assistant or family member or someone just kind of keep things running a lot of people don't treat a business like a real business and i'm not saying that you have to treat it like you're running a restaurant or a convenience store or a brick and mortar location where you have to put in 20 hour days and have all these employees and have all this money tied up and things just to barely be making minimum wage i'm not saying that but i'm saying if you have a huge success and you need to go and take a break we'll do do a little bit more so that every so that things are on a timer so that you can take your vacation and people won't even really know that you're gone and so in our business that means sending an email to your list or sending or making posts to your facebook fan page so what's great about computers is that they can run things on clocks on timers and so uh, most marketers even today make their money from their email list right you have a, a email list and people have signed up for example to get the uh to get our backup creator plugin, or maybe you signed up to get the latest updates about the Robert Plank Show podcast. Well, there's no law saying if I wanted to take the next couple of weeks off, I couldn't, first of all, be a couple of podcast episodes ahead and then go and say, all right, so if I have 50,000 people that are signed up to my email list, well, then on this coming Monday, it's going to send out this email saying go buy backup creator. On Tuesday, it's going to send out another email saying, here's a video showing you Backup Creator. On Wednesday, it says, by the way, here's Backup Creator again. So you get the idea. I set up, I can set up things on a timer so that when I'm gone, the timer will just play out. And many times, that just it's just going to take you five minutes. And I've seen market, and the whole point of all this is I've seen marketers build up huge lists and then let the list go stale and die. And I just said, ah, I mean, you should have given it to given me that list, but if you just had five minutes of spare here and there, you could have saved that list. And then if people say, "Why well, I, I need to? I, I've been writing a book for six months." I say for six months. Well, why? Because it has to say this. It has to say that. It's got to be perfect. And I think, okay, well, are you at a stopping point? Could you put out the book now and have it be the first edition? Or you know, maybe you could record. The last couple chapters of your book maybe you could start the the recorder and then get the audio made go and have someone pay someone a little bit of money not a lot but a little bit to get it transcribed and then you can go and edit it slap it on the end of the book and there you go now now that six months wasn't a waste because you stopped at 95 percent you finished it when you were excited so do things as you're excited and many times it's just it's just you we're only looking for a five minute 
or a one hour block. And even something that could be you could call crazy like doing a live webinar like a pitch webinar or a webinar class. Even that is only an hour. So no one's asking you at all to put in 10 hours in a day or even 10 hours in a week. But four daily tasks, I think that works out to about maybe two hours, 15 minutes every day. So even that is only about what would that be about like 14 hours a week maybe I mean you could call that minimum wage level uh, or not minimum wage part-time um, scheduling and the eight-hour workday is a myth anyway right you think oh you know what I, I'm used to working nine to five I come into an office well no you don't you come in and you go and turn the lights on in your little office you go and you wait for the computer to boot up, you go over to the coffee maker, you go to the bathroom, you go and get a donut, you go and talk to your coworkers, and then by the time you go and sit down, oh, it's time for a meeting, oh, the phone's ringing, I gotta do this and that, and in any given day, even in a corporate America kind of job, you probably only, if you think about it, you only put in maybe an hour of productivity, probably more like 15, 20 minutes. I hate to say it, but that's how it is. and. If you're working from home and you're putting in these eight hour days, well, the time it takes you to knock out that, to, the time it's going to take you to knock out what needs to be knocked out book, podcast, webinar, website, whatever it's going to expand to the time that you allot it. So you, if you only allot 20 minutes, you'll get it done in 20 minutes or have it good enough. And if you allot eight hours, 10 hours to do it, it's going to expand the whole thing. And so multitasking slows you down a huge, huge amount. So First of all, so we're about to unpack uh, the 10 ways to create more free time. But, you know, I'm kind of skipping over the usual stuff or not skipping over, but saying I am and then unpacking it anyway. But don't multitask with the phone, right? Like right now I'm recording my podcast. My phone's over out, out in the hallway, out, out on like there's like a little table thing um, that's out in the hallway, like built into the wall there. So when I go to my into my office, I usually go and I either put my phone in, a, in the desk drawer or out there in the hallway and either way it's either silent or turned off because I can't be diddling on my phone and recording a podcast for you right now I can't be recording a podcast and when I went in a second ago and posted my four tasks into our Facebook group I saw there was oops one notification and what would happen if I paused the podcast now I'm gonna go and see the notification I'm gonna see oh there's a link to click on oh maybe I should see what this other person's doing let me go now and check my other messages let me go and like check in my groups next thing you know the podcast recording has been paused for two hours so to avoid that we want to get things done get to milestones so don't multitask with the phone email Facebook or even watch I mean don't even have a TV in your office leave it out of your room so speaking of TV the biggest time waster even if you stopped here the biggest one is stop watching TV just in general or at least put it off for a couple of weeks or maybe go a few days without watching TV. Don't watch TV every single day. That's the first thing. That's the first way to create more free time. The next one's coming up or number two, schedule time on the calendar to get it done. Number three, throw away old notes or papers. Number four, don't walk into your office after a specific hour. Number five, anchor and associate your office and sitting at the computer with fun. Number six, take short breaks. Number seven, spend five minutes doing something you love. Number eight, read a lot more. Number nine, have leisure goals. And number 10, enjoy the fun of building your business. So we first said stop watching TV just because it's it's a huge time waster. If you ever longed the number of hours you spend every single week watching TV, you would have enough to go and do another full-time job. So you don't and I, I don't remember the exact numbers but it was something like the average adult spends like three or four hours a day watching TV so that's a whole nother job you could have had now the next thing is to schedule time on the calendar to get it done because like we said a few minutes ago if you allocate 10 hours to do something it's gonna take 10 hours if you only allocate an hour it'll only take an hour so I am the most productive when I just go I just go to meetings to get things knocked out. So I go to a coaching call that I'm being paid for. I go to a webinar that I'm presenting on. And you and don't get too crazy with this, but if there's something that is really, really important, like you say, okay, I need to record my podcast episode this this week, and actually I'm gonna do this right now, then put 
a little time slot on the calendar and treat it as if you had to go and meet with that person. Okay, so you go over to your calendar and I'm and I'm going to say that on Wednesday at 8 a.m. that I'm going to record not the Robert Plank show episode that we're talking on right now, but the next episode. I'm going to record that this coming Wednesday at 8 a.m. my time. Great. So schedule time on the calendar to get it done and actually stick to your appointments. The, the way that, that this calendar system will fail, that, that it fails for many people, is they overload themselves. They schedule a bunch of things on the calendar. They say, oh, I'm going to schedule, a, I'm going to you know, make this book cover at 9, and then I'm going to go and uh, take a coffee break at 10. I'm going to use the bathroom at 11. The next thing you know, they don't adhere to any of it, or they keep on moving boxes around on the calendar, and it's just like, you, it never it never became a useful tool for you. You never used it. So the calendar, you schedule an appointment to do a thing. You sh you treat it like a doctor's appointment. You actually you make it or no matter what you show up, you get it done. Now it's over with. So we're talking about simplicity. And speaking of simplicity, you don't need a bunch of extra things clogging up your mind. This is why I hate to do lists or people who have to do lists that help you find other to do lists. I mean, forget it. Throw away old things you don't need. So throw away old notes and papers because you don't need that clogging up your mind. So I have one sheet of paper sitting at my desk right now and there are a, there's a, I, I was doing a trying to solve like a programming problem. So I wrote down maybe five or six things and did a little doodling and once this sheet of paper is filled up, I'm going to crinkle it in a, do a ball and toss it in the garbage because you don't need all that old stuff clogging up your mind. If, uh, for example, if you brainstormed some stuff to make your book and then you you did all that and made your book, you don't need the notes, the brainstorming anymore. It's created. If you have notes to make a product or to run a podcast and you made it, well, you don't need the notes anymore because it's done. So throw away old stuff because you don't need it clogging up your mind. Number four, don't walk into the office after a specific hour. So if you say, so, and so this, this prevents you from becoming a workaholic. You say, okay, well, after 6 p.m., I'm not going to go into my office. Okay, so that way, or maybe even it's 3 p.m. or 2 p.m. And this way, the deadline to getting it all done is 2 p.m. So then that way, that way you're in a rush, but in a good kind of rush, and that way you have these boundaries. And for a couple of, for a few, for a few days or a few weeks even, you might notice that you're not getting a lot of done. There's a little bit of growing pains, but once your brain gets used to like, okay, like now I have to get done by 2 p.m., then guess what? You'll get the things that are important finished by 2 p.m. The reason for this is because we want to do this thing called anchoring and we want you to associate your office and sitting at the computer with fun, creati creativity, I should say, productivity and being in that flow state. And in fact, here's another little sub tip for you is leave your windows open on your computer to whatever it is that you need, need to do tomorrow, right? So if you're leaving the office today, then, and you know that the first thing tomorrow is you're going to write a blog post, then open up your web browser and go to your blog and say, boom, new blog post, leave it blank. And that way, when you come back to the, the computer tomorrow morning, you just sit down and do it or write down or type in the title of the new blog post and then you sit down and you do it. That way there's no waiting for the computer to boot up. That way there's no, let me go check my email and Facebook first. You sit down, you go, that's it. Take short breaks without the phone. And this is great because it allows you to multitask. And uh, if you if you like to walk or you think that you know maybe you should walk between breaks, even just around the block or down the street, it helps so much to break up the day and to recharge. And it doesn't, doesn't take that long to recharge. Just knock out what needs to get done and take your little walk, come back, and that way you can be at your best when you come back. Speaking of being at your best, I mean, life is short. And even if, I mean, you should have hobbies. There should be other things that you do. So spend just five minutes doing something you love, like, I don't know, like playing the piano or, uh, or, or writing something. But if you're the, an entrepreneurial kind of person, then my guess is that a lot of what motivates you is, is creating something, right? It's to go from something that 
that's with nothing and then you built something right and this is why cooking can be fun this is why cleaning sometimes can be fun this is why writing can be fun programming for me can be fun all these tasks that i mean anyone else would think you're crazy to think it's fun but you're you're building something you're building towards something number eight read a lot more this will help you just in, in terms of of your problem solving and your mental health and all that and if you say i don't have time to read i thought today was about creating more free time well read at night read before you go to bed and read just one page per night there's been a, a few studies where uh people when people read just one page per night first of all if if you did that let's say that if tonight you you whatever book that you've been putting off or that you need to want to read or whatever tonight you read just one page of it then went to bed well that's 365 pages per year you're reading but what they found is when people do that they end up they end up reading a page minimum and many times it's five to ten pages per night and that means they end up reading five to ten extra books per year now you should have some kind of uh, leisure goals so that means that if so for for me I like to listen to a lot of audiobooks right I used to run uh, broken ankle still recovering uh, I still walk though but have these goals of of being able to run a certain distance to be able to to beat your past high score or if you're into whatever sport like swimming or golf or baseball or something then have some kind of activity like that where you can get a high score and then beat the high score now video games aren't super great for this because it's too similar to the sitting at the computer stuff but if, if it, sure if video games motivate you then have an activity like that where you can get really good at it and you can beat it and that way that's that's that extra fulfillment that you're, you're trying to get that you want to get and i think that that's as we're writing down and as we're about to reveal the 10th and final way to become super productive and to create more free time is that you need to you need to figure out a way in everything you do in life to satisfy and to, to fulfill that that building that need to build something and building also means that it, it comes from nothing you plan some stuff you get the pieces in place and at some point it's finished right like if someone is building uh like a skyscraper well, at some point, it, it's complete, right? It's not just a thing that keeps growing and growing and growing over time. So there's all these little components of you need to do something that that you can do in a short amount of time that you can build that will actually be complete. And the tenth and final way to create more free time is to enjoy the fun of building your business. Because if you think about it, the actual actions, the activities you take every day are meaningless, right? You wake up, you shower, you get, you put a... Uh, fabric on your clothes you put food in your in your mouth you sit at the computer these are all just random events but then the meaning of what it all meant is what you make it so if you tell yourself that you've always been beat down and there's no hope well then that is what you will continue to believe if you believe that uh that some days are, are better than others sure or if you believe that uh, if you have had some setbacks in the past and those setbacks are just setting you up for something even better now or you've learned some great life lessons or you know maybe you had some some thing, some bad things happen and for a while you let that bring you down and then now you kind of get some perspective and look at your priorities and look at what's important in life and you say well I don't really care what happened in the past what's more important now is that I finish that book finish that membership site set up that website get those coaching clients whatever but the meaning is what you make it and it's really important that you enjoy the fun of building your business and that you decide to take that action and that you decide to have fun every step of the way and if it's, something's not quite working then you need to take a break and quit and come back so that it then is working and if you're in this process of try, of going from zero to having a successful business there is that little bit of growing pains and for you I don't know it might have been weeks or might have been years but that's the the gap we have to get across right we have to go from having nothing and having way too many ideas 
focus it down and narrow it down to just the one idea and finish something today. Get that website online today. Get the book published this week. Get to the money making phase and do it in stoppable or resumable milestones. And that means that if you want to put out a book and you know there's going to be a couple of typos, why don't you just publish it by Friday this coming week and then you can go back and fix the typos and then republish it on Amazon a few days later. Or if you say, I want to have this book, but I want to have pictures and things like that. What if you put the book out now and then went back, added pictures, and then up add and upload the updated revised edition? So anything that we do online, we can pretty much uh, redo if we mess up or we can uh, make it 10% or 5% better. But don't let that perfectionist habit, that trap, stop you from getting to where you need to go. Create more free time by removing TV, by scheduling events that are, that are important on the calendar, by throwing away old notes and papers because those will just distract you, by having boundaries of what's the latest time I can go into my office and go out my computer and get things knocked down. Uh, only sit at that office chair when you're performing money-making activities. Take short breaks and don't take your cell phone with you. Just go out for a walk and just kind of chill and reset. Spend five minutes doing something you love, read more, have leisure goals, and enjoy the fun of building your business. If you're stuck, if you're still stuck with time management stuff, you need some extra training, buy my 100 Time Savers book, uh, buy my course at Time Management on Crack. And if you're an internet marketer or a wannabe internet marketer or you have trouble setting up websites, I want to give you the training course for this. I want to show you how to set up a niche blog opt-in page, autoresponder sequence, sales letter, download page, membership site, traffic, and more. And that is at IncomeMachine.com. And finally, be sh and even if you can't buy a course, at least be sure to rate and review us at robertplankshow.com slash iTunes. I would really, really appreciate it if you could take 30 seconds and give me a five-star review, and that'll help us rise in the rankings. So go ahead, do it right now. And this has been The Robert Plank Show. Create more free time, become super productive, and enjoy the money-making process again. Subscribe to my blog at robertplank.com. That's R-O-B-E-R-T-P-L-A-N-K.com. I'm Robert Plank from The Robert Plank Show. Become super productive. Have a great week, and thank you. Thank you.